Hey guys, Mr. Rast here, and uh, we're going to be talking today about um, topic seven, which is going to be covalent bonds and Lewis dot structures. But before we start, I just thought it's real interesting to look at the periodic table uh, because there's so many interesting things in there. A lot of times we just kind of glance over it real quick; we don't really appreciate it. But if you know, you just look on here, and there's just so many interesting elements. And, and if you look close enough, you just—it's just really interesting. And um, check out, look at this guy. Did you notice that before? That's the element of surprise. Yeah, really. All right. It's a it's a joke, Kaylin. I'm joking. Okay. Um, and Abby. So um, we're going to be talking about topic seven, covalent bonds and Lewis dot structures. I'm Mr. Rast, and let's get started. So up to this point, we've been talking, or actually the last test we taught, we um, dealt with different type of bond called ionic bonds. And ionic bonds are when we um, form a bond by the attraction between oppositely charged ions. So we've been learning about ions and giving up ions makes you more positive, makes cations and donating those ions to something else makes it an anion. And these positive and negative things come together, they're charged and they stick together. So those are ionic bonds. Um, what we're gonna be doing in this section is we're gonna be talking about covalent bonds and in particular, how to illustrate them and how they look trying to model them. And so covalent bonds are formed when atoms share one or more electrons. So in ionic, we are donating. Something's giving an electron and something else is accepting an electron. We're in a covalent bond. They are sharing electrons. Um, something to note that's not written on here is ionic bonds are formed when you have a metal bonding to a non-metal. The metal is a cation and the non-metal is an anion. Wherein covalent bonds are formed when you have two non-metals um, creating a bond together. So two non-metals make a covalent bond. So let's go into how to illustrate this. Um, we do this by um, a, a model we call the Lewis structure or often referred to as the Lewis dot structure. And this is a model that shows how the valence electrons are arranged among atoms in a molecule. Um, valence electrons, not all the electrons, just the valence electrons. And if you um, don't remember what that is, you gotta go back a few lessons, a few topics back uh, when we talked about electron diagrams. Um, valence electrons are the outermost electrons, the outermost shell. Those electrons on the outermost shell are really what's going to drive the chemistry of different atoms and how they behave and their chemical properties. So we're talking about the valence electrons of all the atoms in a molecule. And when we do this, it will follow another word that we looked up when we talked about the periodic table. Um, it will follow the octet rule. So um, the atoms will try to get eight valence electrons around them. That's the most stable configuration, having eight um, valence electrons around them, except for the 1s orbital um, atoms. So the 1s, that's hydrogen and helium. The, the noble gas configuration for the first period is uh, helium. So they are only going to get two valence electrons around them, ideally. So when we talk about hydrogen, its stable condition will be a helium configuration, which is two valence electrons. Everybody else will want to get eight valence electrons around them to become a stable configuration. So they'll fill up those S and P orbitals. So let's talk about the rules, the, the technique on how to make a Lewis structure. Rules for making a um, Lewis dot structures. The first thing you do is you sum all of the valence electrons. You sum all the valence electrons for all the atoms in the molecule. So you take a look at the molecule, however many atoms you have, you look at the valence electron for each atom and you add that all up together. Then you connect them all. So use a pair of electrons to form a bond between each pair of atoms. So for all the atoms, I want you to connect them all together. And a connection is a pair of electrons. So every line you draw connecting them all together counts as two. Now you should however many you used in two versus how many you had in one. So you subtract your number that you had in one, subtract how many you need to connect them all together. That's how many you have left. You use those remaining um, electrons to satisfy the octet rule. You have to use all the electrons. You can't use more and you can't use less. And you have to satisfy the octet rule for all of the atoms in the structure. 
of course, assuming they are not the 1s, which is hydrogen or helium. So hydrogen will only get two around them. Everybody else must have three around them. So what do I mean about the first thing? I mean, the second thing about um, making a bond and, and that represents two electrons. If you take a look here at hydrogen, hydrogen is the first element on your periodic table. And I highly suggest you have a periodic table next to you while you're watching this video and follow along with me with your periodic table. But um, hydrogen has one valence electron. It's the first element on the periodic table. And um, to be stable, we were just talking about that, it should have two to be a helium configuration. So if we talked about with ionic bonds, maybe a hydrogen would take something from someone else to become stable. It would gain an electron to get two, and it would become an anion. The problem is if, if you have just two hydrogens together, which one would be giving up to make the other one more stable? Since they're both equal, neither one is going to want to give up those electrons um, to the other one. And so what happens in covalent bonds is instead of giving up an electron, they come together and they're so close together, they actually kind of share those electrons. So the hydrogen here has two, this bond right here, this, whenever you see a line, this, this is a bond and these bonds represent two electrons. This is an important concept. Every time you see any kind of illustration of a chemical model and you see lines between uh, letters, those represent two electrons. So this hydrogen here has two electrons near it. It's sharing this bond here. It's got its own and it's sharing one with this hydrogen. So it's got two. So it's got a helium noble gas configuration. It's stable. And this one over here also has two electrons around it and it makes it stable. So hydrogen forms stable molecules when it shares its two electrons. If you remember back earlier, we talked about the diatomic atoms. There are seven atoms that when they're found in nature are elements, they're always paired. Um, and one of those seven was hydrogen. And it makes sense now if you do a Lewis dot structure, why hydrogen is always found in pairs. Hydrogen is always found as H2 because it will share those electrons. It's one electron with another hydrogen to make a stable configuration of helium. On the other hand, fluorine doesn't have one. If you look at the periodic table, you'll find that fluorine has seven. And if you don't know how to figure this out, let's take a look at our periodic table. So if you can't remember how to figure this out, um, the first hydrogen has one and then helium has two. Okay. Now lithium has that first period is its core. And now lithium also has one because it's the new, it's the first element on a new level. So lithium has um, one valence electron and two in the core. And if you fill up all the way to neon, sodium also has one valence electron and everything else in the core. So everybody in this column here has one valence electron because they're the first element on a new row or a new shell properly um, to be to, to word it. So these guys all have one valence electron. Um, therefore, everybody in this column has two valence electrons. And if this is a little confusing to you, please go back in lessons about electron configurations because that's what I'm talking about here. But hopefully this is just a refresher for you. Um, the D block and the F block both fill into the core. So the D block here um, would also have two valence electrons. So you have one, two, and then these fill into the core. Everybody in this column has three valence electrons, four, five, six, seven, and this would be eight, except for helium has two valence electrons. So just placed on the periodic table, you can figure out, and if you have your own periodic table and you would like to write on it, you could even write here, you could write, um, one valence electrons, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then you could just look at that column and you just quickly figure out how many valence electrons it has, just, just as a little reminder on how to do that. Okay, so we've, we've established that fluorine has seven valence electrons. And, if there, and, and, and to make a noble gas configuration, the rule of octet, it wants to have eight. So if there's one fluorine around, there's going to be other fluorines around. We're not talking about an atom just hanging out alone. It's going to have thousands and millions and billions and moles of other atoms around. So if fluorine has seven and it wants eight, and there's other fluorines around, they will 
come together and share that lone one that they have here. If you take a look at this configuration, they've got pair here, a pair here, a pair here, giving it seven. And if they share that lone pair and make a bond between the two fluorines, this is a stable configuration. And again, fluorine is another one of those diatomic atoms that we've talked about. Um, fluorine is always going to be found as F2. And it's going to now, if you take a look at this, this, fl this fluorine here has eight electrons around it. It's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight around this one. Remember, the bonds are shared between the two of them. So the right fluorine has also got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And so now you've got two stable um, atoms um, formed together by making a covalent bond. Okay. So let's go through these rules and illustrate water. How do we do the rules? So the first rule was to um, the first rule was to sum the valence electrons for everything in the um, the molecule. So if we're looking at water, we're looking at two hydrogens and one oxygen. Two hydrogens and one oxygen. Hydrogen each has one valence electron and the oxygen has six valence electrons. Again, look at your periodic table and make sure you understand you're not going to be able to go anywhere until you understand that oxygen has six because of its location on the periodic table. Remember, one, two, three, four, five, six, this whole, this whole row, seven and then um, eight. So make sure that you understand that spot. If you don't understand electron configurations, please go back. You will not be very successful with this if you do not understand valence electrons and how to figure them out. Anyways, water has got eight valence electrons. Um, we're going to connect everything, and we have everything connected here, all, all everything in here, the, the water, and you've got... Um, We've used two bonds to connect the three atoms in water. And so we've used up now one, two, three, four of the eight. We've used up four of the eight. Um, and that, that's our second step. And then finally, we're going to place the rest of them. So we've, we're going to place the rest of them until we get something stable. And I'm going to illustrate this on the paper for you, what I'm talking about here. So the water, the water molecule had... Um, you might have said, okay, hydrogen has one, hydrogen has one, and the oxygen has um, six. So I've got eight valence electrons to, to work with here. And you might have thought to yourself, well, why did I, uh, I wrote HOH? Why, why not write it like this? H, H, O. After all, it is H2O, right? It's H2O. Why not write HHO? Well, remember... Hydrogen is trying to reach a noble gas configuration that is of helium, which only has two. If you were to write it this way here, this first hydrogen would have one, two electrons around it, which would make it stable. But this middle one here has one, two, three, four. There's too many electrons around this middle hydrogen. So it's hydrogen will never be in the middle. It'll never be in the middle. Hydrogen is always going to be the ends of a molecule because it's only going to have one bond because it only needs two electrons. So it will never be in the middle. So therefore, that is why it'll look like this when we illustrate this. Okay. So if I illustrate it like this, I have eight I've used one, two, three, four electrons to connect everything together. So I'm going to subtract four from this, from my bonds. And now I've got four electrons left over. And I'm going to use those electrons to satisfy the octet for, I'm going to use this to distribute these um, to, to uh, achieve a noble gas configuration for each atom. Again. The hydrogens right now have a helium configuration, so those four extra electrons, those four extra electrons are going to go around the oxygen. I'm going to go around the oxygen here, and now I've got um, eight around the oxygen, which is a noble gas configuration. So the hydrogen has two, the oxygen has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and the other hydrogen has also two. So this would be a noble gas configuration for water. It, water would have um, 
two lone pairs. See, these ones are not connected. These uh, these pair when the electrons are always going to be paired up. By the way, when we do Lewis structures, they're always going to be in pairs. The pair will either be a lone pair that's not connected to anything like this, or the pair will be re represented as a line where it's a bond. So a bonding pair or a lone pair. In the molecule water, we have two bonding pairs and two lone pairs around the oxygen. Okay, let's take a look at another one. Um, we're going to write the Lewis structure for carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide. So that's one carbon and um, two oxygens. Carbon has four valence electrons and the oxygens have six valence electrons and there's two oxygens so that gives us a total of 16 valence electrons. Again if you need to pause the videos at any time check your periodic table work along with this make sure you understand these steps don't just listen and let it fly by and you don't know what was going on. Okay so 16 valence electrons in carbon dioxide. Now we're going to form bonds between everything. Generally speaking the first element listed when we talk about covalent bonds um, we're going to we're going to be um, is going to be the center molecule so carbon dioxide it's not a carbon don't write it carbon oxygen oxygen the carbon is going to be the center point so usually the first letter the first um, element is the center point so carbon dioxide the carbon would be the center and then we put the oxygens on the outside as opposed to writing carbon o and then an o because that would be a possibility too wouldn't it so make this your center carbon dioxide. All right. Um, so now we've had 16. We did this here. And how many did we use? We've used one, two, three, four. So I had 16. I used four of them to make this connection. One, two, three, four. I've got 12 valence electrons remaining, and I'm going to place them to achieve a noble gas configuration for the rest of the atoms. So let's say I take tw there's 12 of them. So let's put six around one oxygen and six around the other oxygen and say, all right, well, I, I placed everything. I've used up all 16 um, electrons to make this configuration. Would this be the correct answer? Nope, it's not the correct answer. So I'm going to go over right now some tricks of the trade to double check if you're doing your Lewis dot structures right. So we're going to take a look at this in a little more detail here and see what it, what happened, um, what are we doing wrong if there's something wrong and, and what do we need to do. So let's take a look. Why is this incorrect? So the questions you need to ask yourself, remember there were 16 valence electrons involved in this molecule CO2. Did we use all 16 electrons? Okay, well let's check. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Yes, I did use all 16. So that's the first thing I want to check. Did I use all of my electrons? And the answer in this situation is yes, I did. The second thing you need to do is take a look at every atom in the molecule and ask yourself, does every atom in the molecule follow the octet rule? Do they all have a noble gas configuration? And in this situation, the answer is no. Well, let's take a look at the oxygen here. The oxygen around it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Well, that met the octet rule, and so does this oxygen. It's the same exact configuration, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But let's look at this carbon. How many valence electrons does the carbon have? It only has one, two, three, four. Carbon is not um, met the octet rule. So um, this is not the correct electron configuration because not all the atoms are stable right now. The carbon is deficient in electrons. So I'm going to give you another one. Let's take a look at another one. We'll do the same checklist and see is this correct? Is this a, a better situation? Because there's more than one way to do this and that's the whole thing about Lewis dot structures is trying to figure out the right way that fulfills the rules. It's kind of a game that we play. We have to follow the rules to see if we can get it to work right. So if we take a look here, does this follow the rules, this configuration? Did I use all the electrons? Remember we said there were 16. Let's count here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Yes, I've used all 16 electrons. So the answer would be yes again to this one. And do all of the atoms, um, do all the atoms here fulfill the octet rule? So if we take a look here, 
Um, oxygen has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So does this oxygen? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And the carbon in the center has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Remember, each bond counts as two electrons. So this situation here um, is stable. It, it, it is a stable um, and correct drawing for the Lewis dot structure for carbon dioxide because we've used all of the valence electrons and every atom has a stable um, noble gas configuration around it. So it's, it's kind of a fun little game to try to, you know, solve. Having said that and taught you kind of the textbook way of doing this, um, when I was in college, I was a um, teacher's assistant in chemistry, and I would work with groups of students that are taking chemistry, and, and I would teach them, um, you know, kind of help them with the instruction that the professor was giving them. And I kind of came up with my own way of doing this, and I taught the, the kids, the, the students, my peers, they were college students also, I taught them um, the way I was doing it. And my professor got wind of the way I was doing it. And I called it the connect the dots way. And, um, he told me don't teach him that because there's, ex there's, there's times where this won't work. Well, I adjusted and I've added new, like more rules to it and whatnot. And, I, and it does pretty much, this will, this will work for any situation. Uh, this lesson, this, this first lesson in topic seven, I'm going to give you some pretty straightforward ones, but in the second one, I'm going to give you some more challenging ones, examples that my professor said that the connect the dots rule would not work. And I'm going to show you, I'm going to modify the rule um, and, and kind of give you my whole definition of the rule and it will work for everything. I think it's quite awesome when I'm going to show you some examples of this. It makes, I think it makes your life a lot easier. Rather you want to do it the textbook way or the connect the dots way, it doesn't really matter. I don't care. I'm not offended if you don't choose to do it the way I do it. Um, it, it doesn't matter. Bottom line, you need to be able to do Lewis dot structures. That's that's the bottom line. And how you do it, it's up to you, just as long as you can get to the right answer. So, But my way, it will get you there. And it is, it is tested and proven, in my opinion. And I'll, I'll give you a lot of examples. We'll work a, a lot in topic seven. I'll show you lots of uh, examples of this. Okay, so first thing is, uh, we are going to write the Lewis dot configuration, the valence electrons, for all the atoms in your compound. So remember the other one, we summed up all of them. In my, the way I do it, I like to just write out all of the atoms in the compound and put those valence electrons around it. So if we do that, uh, let's do that right now. I'm going to do that right now for carbon dioxide again, because that's, that's what we just did. We did carbon dioxide. We already figured it out. But I'm going to try it in a different method and see if, if, you, if, this is easier or not for you. So instead of adding it up and coming up with that magic number 16, I don't even know what it is. But remember, I said the carbon, that the first letter is the center. So I'm going to put carbon here. And we did say carbon has four valence electrons. So I'm going to put those four valence electrons around the carbon, um, treating it four sides, north, south, east, west. I'm going to put it around there following Hun's rule. Remember Hun's rule saying that the electrons want to be apart before they pair up? It's very important if you do it this way that you follow Hun's rule um, because what's happening here is, is these orbitals are hybridized and the electrons will fall apart. They'll be forming apart before they form together. So let's take a look at this. Let's put those four together. One, two, three, four. It's important you put them apart. Do not do this. One, two, three, four. No, not like that. Remember, they want to be apart, and then they'll pair up if they have to. And I'll show you that pairing up, an example of that with oxygen right here. We've got two oxygens. So I'm going to put an oxygen on this side. Let's put an oxygen on this side. And oxygen, we determined, had six valence electrons. Double check on your periodic table. Six. And I'm going to, remember, I'm going to go around and then go around. So I never pair, just like when we did those arrows and those boxes, um, following Hun's rule, we, we fill up all the boxes, and then we pair them together. So let's fill up all those sides. We go one, two, three, four. We did all four sides, and now I'm going to start pairing up because there's six. One, or I'm sorry, one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's like this, and same with this oxygen. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so now if it's already paired, um, we're going to circle them. If we're already paired, let's just circle them because that's the ideal situation, okay? So that's the first step here. So let's go back over here. The second step is all the lone pairs. So everything I didn't circle, all the lone, uh, not lone pairs, all the lone electrons, we're going to um, pair them up. We're going to 
we're going to draw lines. We're going to draw lines with all of them. All the while, while we do this, we're going to be singing the Connect the Dots song. Yes, there's a song that's involved in this. And to do my way, you have to sing the song. If you're embarrassed, you don't want to sing the song, then, then you're going to have to do it another way. It's just not going to work for you. No, I'm kidding. You don't have to sing, but uh, you should. It's fun. Okay, so you're going to sing the song. And the song, I, I can't take credit for it. Um, the song was written by the brilliant Pee Wee Herman. Um, when I was younger, Pee Wee Herman was on TV. Saturday mornings, that's when all the, 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 the kids shows were on. And I think Pee Wee Herman appealed more to adults and teenagers than kids. It was a very bizarre show. It's a grown man that acts like a little child, wears a suit and a tie. All his furniture talks to him. His chair talks to him. His screen talks to him. Everything like that. And, and um, screen like an Etch-A-Sketch. And so anyways, during the, cart, the, the show, sometimes he goes into the magic screen and he plays connect the dots. You guys know connect the dots. And that's basically what we're doing here. And when you play connect the dots, you connect the dots together with everything. And what he does is he plays connect the dots in the screen. And then he plays with whatever it is. But every time he connects the dots, he sings the connect the dots song. So let's hear that. Connect the dots. La, 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 la. I'm not hearing Connect the dots. La, 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 la. <laughs> hey. Did you guys hear that? Okay, apparently my headphones were turned off. That's why I didn't hear anything. Um, so, I think you guys did hear it, but you know, it's worth hearing again. So here's the song. the dots. La 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 la. la, la. <laughs> hey. <laughs> okay, so that's the song. So when you're connecting the dots, sing the connect the, the connect the dots song. So let's um, take a look over here. And we will go to step two. So the lone electrons, we're going to connect the dots. So we're going to go <laughs> connect the dots, la, 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 connect the dots, la, la, la. All right. So I connected the dots as Pee Wee Herman's um, song would, would uh, in, inspire me to do so. And um, as I connect the dots here, um, I, I start to see a little bit of the structure here, but you're not done. Please don't turn in something that's like this. This is this is not a Lewis dot structure. This is kind of a wacky thing. And in my class, I'll understand what you're doing, but it's not appropriate to turn in something that looks like this yet. So the next thing you need to do is, the third thing is, redraw a clean version of your molecule. So let's go back and look at what we have here in a clean version. So what I mean by that is let's look at, we have an oxygen and on top of it, we have a lone pair. To the left of it, I made a lone pair and it's connected to a carbon. How many times? See that? It's connected twice. So I'm gonna have a double bond to a carbon and then, I'm con and then this carbon, does it have any lone pairs around it? No, there's, there's no electrons around it. There's no lone pairs. And this carbon is connected to an oxygen how many times? Is connected twice so I've got another double bond to an oxygen and that oxygen has two lone pairs around it and that's what we did in the other example would it be wrong would it be any different to do it like this no this is fine oh oops that's the same thing if you put them on the top and the left uh, that's the same thing as top and bottom it doesn't make a difference but they have to be apart it is not okay to do it like this. This is not an okay thing to do. Some people just start putting all their dots over here. I've seen that. That's not okay. You can't do that. Um, I've seen people just start putting them like here, just all over the place like this. So don't do that. Okay. You have the top, a bottom, a right or left. That's where you put them. And, and you should have, you can have a pair here. You can have a pair here, pair here, pair here is good or something like this. So these are good ones. That's a good example. This is not a good example. All right. So let's take a look at some more stuff. We'll do some more examples till you get comfortable with this. <clears throat> so first example, sulfur diiodide. Let's do this one here. Sulfur diiodide, a sulfur and an iodine twice. So let's do this. Sulfur, take on your look on your periodic table, has six valence electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six. Iodine has seven valence electrons. Remember, you need to be looking at your periodic table when we do this so you know why I'm putting the dots where I'm putting. And another iodine 
has seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. I'm going to circle all of my lone pairs that are already satisfied the octet rule. And then all I got to do is connect the dots. La la la. Connect the dots. <laughs> all right. So I connected the dots. Now I'm going to have the last thing I have to do is write this clean. So I've got an iodine with three lone pairs around it connected one time to a sulfur that has two lone pairs around it, which is connected one time to another iodine, which has three lone pairs around it. Okay. I know it's connected over here. Don't be tempted to put those lone pairs above these two above. Uh, because that's where your bond is. So you, you got to either have a bond or a lone pair. Don't don't put those on there. So this is a very appropriate way of doing it. If you would have made it a straight line or anything else like that, um, that's fine. The, um, the most important thing is, though, that the sulfur was in the middle because that's the first element here. Okay. Let's do um, another one. The next one we're going to do is... Oxygen. Oxygen is another diatomic element, meaning that oxygen is always found in pairs. And let's understand why it's always found in pairs and a little bit about of it about its properties here. So oxygen is O2. It has six valence electrons. It has six. And I'm gonna do another six. One, two, three, four, five, six. These guys are not going to pair. Now we're going to connect the dots, la, 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 connect the dots, la, la. Then I'm going to draw it clean. There's an oxygen with uh, two lone pairs, double bonded to another oxygen that has two lone pairs. So O2, just looking at O2 doesn't tell us that it has a double bond, but when we do the Lewis dot structure, we find that it does, it, it does have a double bond. And we will get into, in a later lesson, what does it mean to have a double bond or a single bond or even a triple bond? What, what does that actually mean to the, to the, the chemical structure of, of this? Uh, the next question, the next problem we're going to walk you through is CH2O, CH2O. So let's try this one here. CH2O. It's getting a little more complicated here. So we have a carbon, which has four valence electrons. We have two hydrogens. And you could draw them anywhere you want. I'm purposely not putting them where I know they're going to end up, I'm trying to make it a little sloppy. And, um, and an uh, oxygen. The key point is you have to unravel this properly. One, two, three, four five, six. So the only ones that aren't going to be connecting dots are these oxygens over here. So let's, for this one here, um, where it's connect the dots. Connect the dots. La, la, la. Connect the dots. La, la, la. <laughs> All right, so we connect the dots here. And now let's write this clean. I've got a carbon. Let's write this clean. I've got a carbon and to the left of the carbon, it's connected to a hydrogen. So to the left, I'm going to connect it to the hydrogen. Underneath, it's connected to a hydrogen. And the top and the right, so I'm going to go kind of in the middle, the top and the right are connected twice to an oxygen. And that oxygen has two lone pairs around it. If you didn't make it angled, that's OK. OK, so this would be a nice clean version don't make it like this. Make a nice, clean version for your teacher to show that you actually understand what you're doing if you don't want to get something wrong, okay? And I'm going to do another example. And this one here, I'm going to kind of show you another really cool thing about the connect the dots method that um, cleans up a lot of possible mistakes that can happen here. So this is NH2F, NH2F. Let's do the work for this one too. So N H 2 F. And I'm going to do this one. Um, I'm, I'm going to play around with this one and kind of show you some things that, that the other method may or might, might confuse you with. Remember the other method, you would, you would sum up everything. So nitrogen would have five, hydrogen 
has one, and there's another hydrogen, and then there's a fluorine, which has seven. So we add this up, and I've got 14 valence electrons. And so you've got these 14 valence electrons, and let's just say you were to do this, and, and you just um, you put it together like, like um, you did it, an N to an F to an H to an H. So I've, let's just say you did it like this. And now how many have I used? I've used one, two, three, four, five, six. I've used six. I'm doing this the old way. And I just want to show you something where it's kind of cool about, about um, I'm going to show you two ways to do this. I'm going to show you something that's kind of cool about the connect the dots way. So we subtract here and that would give me eight electrons left over. I got eight left over. And so I'm going to put those eight in here to fulfill the octet here. I've got eight. And right now fluorine has six. So I can go seven, eight there. So I've used up two. So I've got um, six more, and I'm going to use up those six here. One, two, three, four, five, six. So if I do this, um, I have used up all 14 valence electrons. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. The hydrogens both have two, which is perfect. There's eight around fluorine, and there's eight around nitrogen. Everything looks good. Okay, so. That's one way of doing it. Let's do it the connect the dots way and show you um, show you something that will kind of make it so you can't make it's going to look a little different. Let's just do it that way. So nitrogen has um, five. One, two, three, four, five. Remember, there's a pair here. Fluorine has seven. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we've got pairs here. And we've got two hydrogens. Now we're going to connect the dots. La, la, la. Connect the dots. La, la, la. <laughs> and now let's write it clean. I've got a um, hydrogen connected to a nitrogen, connected to a hydrogen, connected to a fluorine that has three lone pairs around it. So I wrote this. Now, the key difference between these two um, illustrations is one of them, I've got a fluorine in the middle and the other one, I've got nitrogen in the middle. This one, I've got nitrogen at the end with three pairs or, or three lone pairs around it. And here I've got fluorine at the end with three lone pairs around it. So which one is correct? And I know I told you that the nitrogen is um, should be the center one. So you probably already know that this is the correct one, which is good. Um, but this is actually incorrect. And you might not realize why it's incorrect. But if you go back and you start thinking about what you learned about periodic trends, so you got to go back a few topics. But if you look at the lessons that we did about periodic trends, um, you remember that as you move from the left to the right on the periodic table, elements get more electronegative. Here's one of those words that we've been learning that, that this vocabulary starts to make everything to come together. So as we move left to right, we get more electronegative. And if you take a look here, what would be more electronegative, nitrogen or fluorine? Well, fluorine is the most electronegative element. It's more electronegative than nitrogen. So what does that mean? More electronegative means that it's got a smaller radius and it's easier for it to pull electrons in to bond with it. So fluorine is not going to share. It's going to pull those electrons to it better than the nitrogen is. So therefore, fluorine is not going to share. It's going to keep as many electrons around it as it can. And the nitrogen is going to be forced to make three shared situations. If you look over here, the fluorine is sharing three times and the nitrogen is hoarding the electrons. This is proper because fluorine is more electronegative and it's not sharing. So this is the correct one from a understanding of the chemistry behind it. It's this one. But the cool thing is when you do connect the dots, the dots here will it, it will drive you to the correct answer. Why? Because, well, nitrogen is not as electronegative as fluorine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you're going to see here that fluorine will always make one connection and the nitrogen will always make three connections. 
So it just guides itself that fluorine will not share as much as the nitrogen. So the nice thing about the connect the dots thing is it has that electronegativity aspect into already built in because fluorine is already hoarding a bunch of electrons around it. So anyways, um, you do what you want, but just keep in mind everything and hopefully you can get the proper electron diagrams for the following. You might want to pause the video here and try to work these out for yourself. For the test, you should be comfortable in writing the electron um, or the Lewis dot structures for all 12 of these. You should not have a problem with them. You should be able to work through this um, well before the test. Now, right now, it's expected. It's the first time you might have a problem. Uh, it might be some challenges, but give it your best. And next class, we're going to put, go through all 12 of these on the board. And um, that would be a great time to ask any questions. If you have any questions, please come see me. Please ask. I'm here to help and uh, I enjoy it. So, hey guys, take care and I will talk to you soon. Bye.